Good everyone, it's Julian, and today we have a update to premium review on the KR61 High Tardis. This is going to be one where I'm sure I'm going to catch some flack from Harry, but, well, someone's got to catch it. This has been a plane that I've always been 50-50 on, and it's got up to rank 4 now with a big price change, and, uh, yeah, I don't agree with it. But before we get into that... In the description below, there's going to be a few timestamps. There's going to be where we cover the weaponry, engine, and also the modifications, so like the bombs and stuff like that. There's also going to be a straight jump to the gameplay if you wish to do so, where you'll actually see a toxic little shitbag in the chat, but that's nothing new. But if you want to do that, please do feel free. Alright, so before we begin, we will obviously go over the price of this vehicle, which is 2,980 Golden Eagles. This vehicle used to be 1,750, and that was a push even at that price. Now sure, being at rank 4, and having the abilities that it does, is very nice. The problem is it's stuck at 4.7, which isn't necessarily the plane's fault. It's the fact that Gaijin just don't know how to balance Japanese planes, because... They always go off of player statistics, not the vehicle statistics themselves. So something like the Kaya 61 Tardis does have the short end of the stick. And you'll see how it really has to rely on enemy mistakes in a 5-7 match. You can imagine what it's like at 4-7 where a lot of the things blow this thing's doors off. But still. So going into the armor first of all, we do have a bit of an interesting one. Which is this new plate down here. Now this provides no actual protection, it's purely meant for the intercooler, but I just thought I'd mention it. You have no bulletproof glass, so better in mind if you're going head on with something, or trying to engage a bomber. You do have a little bit of rearward protection with 16 and 12 respectively, but this is not going to provide you much. In terms of the engine, you do have the Kawasaki HA40, which is a, well, this is a bit of an outdated engine to put it simply. This is based off the DB601. And as you can tell by the horsepower, it is really starting to put, show its age, let's put it that way. And at 4.7, you're going to be upformed by a lot of aircraft. You're going to have to rely on your uh, dogfighting abilities, which this thing can do very well. But against Spitfires and other things like that, it just can't hold it. It can't be a Spitfire reliably. You can do it with flaps, but it will require you to manage your speed and obviously your flaps. Because obviously the flaps are very easy to rip on this thing. So you've got to bear that in mind. But if you can get guns on a Spitfire, they're probably not going to survive very long. So there is that possibility. But generally speaking, a Spitfire Mark IX will hand you your ass. And that's putting that lightly. And bear in mind, most of the time you'll be meeting potentially even LF Mark IX Spitfires, which will definitely kick your teeth in. Not only do they climb better, they turn better, and they also just completely beat you in most metrics. They'll even catch you, so good luck, is all I'll say. In terms of the guns, we do have two 12.7 Ho-103 machine guns with 800 rounds, and we do have something a little bit with a German twist. We do have some 151s here. Now, of course, if you've played the one in the tech tree, you already knew this, but not many people would expect German guns on a Japanese plane. So this is definitely a step up. Now, the 151s are not in the world's best place at the minute, but they are doing okay. Like, I'm running the air targets belt at the minute with 500 meter convergence. Seems to be doing okay, but obviously that is down to my ping, generally speaking. But these guns are pretty good. They will deal with most targets quite well. But of course, you're going to need that because your performance is not the best. Let's put it that way. Going over to the modifications, of course, I do recommend air targets on both guns because you need as much damage as possible. And trust me, you're not going to catch a lot at 5-7 bin matches, let's put it that way. I was never catching any of the Corsairs, I had to rely on them being Muppets. So, yeah, take with that what you will. In terms of bombs, you do have access to 250s, 2100s, and 2250s. This thing does, I believe, get single drop on the 250s, so this thing can be pretty good in ground RB. So that is something to really think about. But if you're buying a premium for the purpose of ground RB, hmm, I'm just going to say buy a premium tank. 
But the thing is about this plane is it does have good metrics and it does have good aspects about it. The problem is, is the positives don't really outweigh the negatives of being at four seven. Now, that's not, as I said, it's not necessarily the plane's fault. And obviously some vehicles are under tiered. But the fact that even an XP-50, which you can fight, just has most metrics covered over you. Yeah, not really fun, is it? Especially when they're charging 1200G more than the original price tag. So, personally, I'd give this one a miss. This is one that you can comfortably miss. And don't worry, I'm going to have my own criticism of the A7M's price tag once I get around to re-reviewing that. But for the moment, if you really want this thing, wait for a 50% off and use it in Ground RB. It's very good in Ground RB because obviously it does have good metrics, as I've said. A lot of the time, you're not going to be running into meta planes in Ground RB. You're just going to be running into ground attackers. And this thing's got the firepower to put them down in half a second. So you've perfectly got that capability. And it's a very good plane in Ground RB. But for RRB work, I cannot advise it. Anyway, I'm going to leave you all to it for today. I will hand you over to the gameplay now, of course. And you'll see not only the toxic little shitbag, but you'll also see just how a bit underwhelming the performance can be. And of course, you'll also witness my poor situational awareness because, yeah. But as I said, it can do a lot of work. Its flight model's been improved, but I wouldn't say it's worth the justification of such a large price tag. Anyway, I'm going to leave you all to it for today, and I hope to see you all on the next one. Well, after dealing with that guy in chat, we found ourselves an AD2 Sky Raider up here. Which, uh... I mean, he's got 3,000 horsepower, so I suppose that's something. Nice crit. Problem is, is uh, the enemy team have a bunch of yaks, and uh, I don't like that. I mean, we've got a Tempest with bombs strapped, which should be interesting. Yeah, I was helping some teammates in chat, and now the B-17 up there is accusing me of well, behave like that in chat. Oh shit! Nope, nope, no, 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 no. Stuck too long, buddy. I didn't think he was gonna go for an attack. That's why I didn't look at him. I love how he's there calling me a bitch in chat, and yet he's the only one who's bitching. That's an assist on the 82. Problem is, this thing just doesn't have the performance to keep up with some of the higher threats. I mean, I'm in a max up tier right now, and I just don't have the performance. Like, yeah, I do have the dive on this guy, but... Thank you. See? You try to help people in War Thunder by being friendly and just helping the team out, and people attack you for it. I deliberately went for my 50 cals there to not steal the kill from the A7. Oh, hello. What are you doing here? Crit, won't be able to catch it. That's fine. Like I say, in a furball, this thing's very good. The problem is you just don't have the speed to dictate everything. Like, you're faster than the zeros, but it's not a huge difference. I think this co has got this under control. Yeah, I'm gonna pull off. I'm not gonna steal the co's kill. That's his. Alright, has he got it? So I don't wanna like leave it behind because I don't want to like worry about a potential Corsair threat. No, nope, he's got it. He didn't even get the kill, that was the unfortunate part. Alright, so two kills, two assists. Nothing special, but this thing's not going to get you high kill games all the time. But it's enough. I've had great success with this thing in Grand RB, so give it a try there, and you might find it's better there. It's really good as anti-cast, because you've got the guns, you've got the maneuverability, you've got good enough speed. 
It's just in RRB where you're going to be fighting five sevens. Yeah, that's going to be pretty tricky. Does carry a decent bomb load, so there is that. Next strafing pass on that BTR, took that out. Nice and easy. Alright, P51. At least now we can just use our guns and take out ground targets. You do also get a decent amount of ammo, so that is something you can also consider. Is it is good as a ground pounder, but obviously don't don't do this right at the start of the match. I'm not saying that, but you know. Awesome. There we go. That's him dealt with. Well, it. There we go. That's another one. See, I must admit, I do like the fact that they've changed the maps to have AI ground targets like this. Really opens up the game a bit more, I think. I must admit, I do like it. And he just... St the AI just stole my kill. That's quite funny. <laughs> I must admit, that was quite funny. Alright. I don't know if there's any AIs left, so I might go after them if there are. Yeah, there is. There is. I'll go after those. Gives us something else to shoot at. Yeah, there goes the B-17 who was being toxic in the chat because I was actually helping people, but, you know, that's just how it is. So the Corsair is back at base, that's fine. Is it the forward airfield or the rear airfield? Is it the forward? So that teammate might be able to deal with him. So I'll just let the team know in chat that that forward airfield doesn't have any AA. I will go after this bot. See, the guns are really good. Like, really consistent. But obviously you do have sparks on occasion, which is something, but, you know, it's... You're never going to have fully consistent guns for the way Kaijin keeps changing things. Another bot might as well. See, there you go, you just had a spark there. I don't know if that Corsair is good enough to fight, but he's not going to win that engagement. Looks like the Corsair is getting his ass handed to him because he's turn fighting a zero. Must be a day that ends in Y. And that's it. Nice and easy. Game's pretty much over at this point. Ooh, PT. Tried to hit it with a cannon, but missed. That's, a, that's just how it is. But there we go. Nice easy game. Two kills, ten grand, two assists. Pretty average match for this plane, to be honest. I know it says 4 here, but that does include the AI. And as you can see, it's pretty nice as well. Whilst it is still good for, like, just being a jack-of-all-trades, this is a plane more for ground RB, and is not good in up-tiers. So if you are going to buy this thing, bear that in mind. But half-off, not a bad shout. And like I said, it's versatile, carries a good bomb load, and it's pretty dang good in ground RB, so make your decision wisely.